magnets, the fields are undefined. It takes a human being to give a magnet a field. This theory is based on the idea that opposites do not attract and like charges do attract. My theory is, is that like charges attract and opposite charges repel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign a value to one magnet and I'm going to use that value to establish the fields of another value, of another magnet. These two fields are repelling. This field is attracting. If opposites attract, then that means the value of this magnet is B. And then the opposite field of this magnet is B. The opposite field of this magnet should be A. So we can clearly see that this field is A and this field is B and opposites attract. We can clearly see that this field is A and this field is A and like charges should repel. Okay, now to my theory, like charges repel and opposites attract. We take an undefined magnet and a defined magnet. Take the undefined magnet and we find a field. Right now, these two magnets are repelling. They're clearly repelling. So, in this case, like charges repel. Like charges will attract, opposite charges will repel. B and B are going to attract, A and A are going to attract, A and B are going to repel. And A and A are repelling. B and B are repelling. A and B should attract with these two. I lost the fields. A and B are repelling. A and A are attracting. I'm going to have to make sure. Here we go. A and B, opposites attract. Opposites are attracting. So what I do is, I take this other blank magnet and I simply make this follow the rule that like charges attract, opposite charges repel, and the federal government is calling me, telling me not to put this on YouTube. Don't do it, Mr. Hammerson. You'll destroy everything we've built. And clearly, like charges are attracting. Opposite charges are repelling. So you have two sets of magnets where the charge, like charges attract and like charges and opposite charges repel, and you have two sets of magnets where opposites attract and like charges repel. Because magnets are rulers used to determine charges, if I use this ruler, all fields of study will be based around these, this ideology. However, if I use this ruler, all fields of study will be based around the idea that like charges attract and opposite charges repel. And that is the fundamental, fun, the fundamental flaw in our science because this proves that electromagnetism is bound by the rules of inverse theory. The inverse of, the inverse of opposites attracting and like charges repelling is like charges attracting and opposite charges repelling. Because of this, I theorize that all the phenomena that we observe in the known universe is actually governed by opposites not attracting but repelling and like charges attracting and not repelling. If you look at a thunderstorm, a Wimhurst generator, electric, the field of electricity, you will clearly see that all positive charges come back together and hook up with all other positive charges. All the protons hang out with all the protons, all the electrons hang out with all the electrons. What we consider electrical current is the result of a volumetric displacement in the known universe. Matter has to occupy space. 
as proton as electrons leave protons and accumulate into relatively stable valence shell of electron orbits. They take up the space in that in that that area of space and they create volume or vacuum in the areas where they left. And it is that this and it is that this, that in the instability and the volume of mass that creates what we observe is electrical current, thunderstorms, etc. The, st the stabilizing nature of the positive and negative duality is also a driving force. Where a pro an, uh, an atomic particle is stable when it has a proton and an, an electron, its charge is zero. Where it's unstable when it's a proton or just an electron. And it is the volume that is the, problem, is the key. The gravitational charge is what governs everything. But we'll get into that later. This is Paul Emerson, and that's my two cents.